If you're like me, you discovered Ridgebacks one day and dove right in to learn more about the breed. Those first moments of discovery are a revelation, as you revel in the breed's exciting history and sturdy nature. The more you learn, the more questions you have. Like, did Ridgebacks actually take down lions by themselves? No. Or where does a ridge come from? That's a bit more complicated. As you'll learn, there's a dedicated team of little magical manicures for each dog. What else would you expect? But at some point in your research, your daydreams inevitably come to a screeching halt when you Google how much does a Rhodesian Ridgeback cost and see $2,000 at the top of your screen. Your head tilt is understandable. How could a dog cost so much? Why could a dog cost so much? The answer eluded me, but over the past decade, I've come to understand the true cost of ethically and sustainably breeding Ridgebacks. I'm not talking about the careless profiteering of backyard breeders, but the Herculean efforts of dedicated and ethical ones who deserve your support. Let's take a closer look at those efforts to help you learn why they're so invaluable. A puppy's journey begins long before you show up and get to cuddle them. Ethical breeders spend their time and money traveling the country to shows and exhibitions to have potential dams and sires evaluated. Both inside the ring by an independent judge and often out in the field as well. If you have the opportunity to visit a show or lure coursing event in person, I highly recommend the experience. It's a great way to get familiar with the breed. These are time consuming and expensive affairs for breeders, but it's a labor of love and a lifestyle for these stewards of the dogs that we all love. The evaluation of a breeding pair also includes extensive genealogy to ensure genetic diversity. Health screenings, joint eye certifications, and behavioral considerations are also essential preparatory work for a good breeder. These breeders are also responsible for the veterinary costs of caring for the dam during pregnancy, and it's usually the breeder who manages delivery as well. At home, once the pups arrive, a breeder pushes their life, and usually their furniture, to the side to care for the litter near around the clock for eight to 10 weeks at least. It requires a singular devotion and usually an unholy amount of caffeine. The best breeders go well beyond ensuring basic health. They also offer critical enrichment and socialization for the puppies each day. It's an all encompassing job. And ethical breeders certainly don't do it for the money because if you add up the years and bills they've accumulated, you'll quickly find the math isn't in their favor. These individuals are motivated primarily by personal fulfillment and passion. The money ethical breeders charge isn't for record profit, it's for sustainability. When you support a good breeder, you're supporting the healthy future of the breed for all of us. Buying a dog from a backyard breeder who churns out litters undermines that future and inevitably contributes to more dogs ending up in rescue shelters. It's essential to know ethical breeders add a grand total of zero dogs to the shelter. For any reason a puppy is unable to be cared for, a good breeder insists the dog is returned directly to them. Because these dogs truly are their family. And if you're fortunate enough to visit a litter in person, you'll see exactly what I mean. When a breeder offers you one of their dogs, they are welcoming you into that family. They're trusting you with one of the things they value most. If you're beginning your own Ridgeback puppy adventure, make sure you spend the time to research and contact as many local breeders as you can. It's always worth the drive to visit a litter and meet the breeder in person, to show them firsthand why you're worthy of their trust, and to ensure the breeder is someone worthy of your support. If you're beginning your own Ridgeback puppy adventure, make sure you spend the time to research and contact as many local breeders as you can. It's always worth the drive to visit a litter and meet the breeder in person. There's really no substitute for an in-person evaluation or for in-person playing with puppies. 
to help you get started, I've included a link to the Rhodesian Ridgeback Club of the United States below, along with a blog I wrote with additional information and resources. The most comprehensive and consolidated material I have about this process can be found in my book. I've included a link to it in the description below as well. I always like to emphasize that when you join a breeder's extended Ridgeback family, you have lifetime access to their knowledge and resources. And unlike Penny's mom, who wisely pretended not to remember her wild offspring, a breeder will never forget about you. I know I can reach out to John or Mary anytime I need help or have questions. There is no single best breeder. Each one has their own preferences and opinions, and there's plenty of good faith disagreements between them. But there is nearly unanimous consent about embracing the demands of their work. Not in spite of the fact that owners wouldn't know if they cut corners, but because of it. They go above and beyond to set both people and puppies up for success. It really makes a world of difference. Emmy, from Roaring Fork Rhodesian Ridgebacks, was kind enough to share these videos from her recent litter. The clips offer just a glimpse at the enrichment, training foundation, evaluation, and care that great breeders provide their litters. Not pictured are the countless hours of cleaning up and all the middle of the night wake ups. These first weeks of life are so critical to a puppy's development. Why trust anyone less than someone who has your full confidence? There are certainly easier ways of buying a Ridgeback than through a reputable breeder, but I can assure you there is no better way. I mean, if you need proof of their dedication, here's Emmy socializing the puppies in creative fashion since she wasn't able to have people over her house during quarantine. On that note, a pretty good litmus test for the quality of a breeder is how crazy I think they are. As in, the crazier, the better. Because only a crazy person would go through all of this, pour their heart into all of this work, and then offer the joyful fruit of their labor to other people. I'm crazy about my dogs, so I trust those who are too. There's no doubt, $2,000 is a ton of money. But these days, I find myself asking not how ethical breeders charge so much, but how they manage to not ask for even more. The answer, as always for them, is simply because they do it for love. The money really just helps keep the lights on. My dogs are my family. Like my kids, they didn't have a choice getting stuck with me. But I had a choice about where I got them. And I'm proud to support breeders like John, Mary, and Emmy, whose devotion to Rhodesian Ridgebacks makes my journey and so many others possible. I hope this video helps explain how much Rhodesian Ridgebacks cost and where your money goes when you support a reputable breeder. But more importantly, I hope it explains how much these dogs are worth to the devoted and wonderful people who breed them responsibly. In the end, like those breeders, and like me, I know you'll discover your dog is invaluable. Your investment in a great breeder will pay dividends for years to come, in ways both large and small, and in ways you know and might not realize. You can feel good about supporting the health and longevity of the breed. I'm grateful for all the dedicated breeders over the years who have allowed me to share my life with these incredible dogs. 
and I'm happy to know I'm playing a small part in ensuring future generations will have the same opportunity. Hopefully, they'll also do a better job at training their Ridgebacks, but that is another story.